Hi, I'm Rob from B&H, and in this video, we're going to check out the Track 16, an exciting new USB 2.0 and Firewire desktop audio interface for Mac and PC from American company Motu. And we've seen a number of desktop interfaces lately, but the Track 16 brings quite a bit to the table, including 16 inputs and 14 outputs, DSP EQ, compression and reverb, and 7-step LED meters, all in a very slick, easy to use chassis. In addition, the Track 16 offers recording resolutions of up to 24-bit, 192 kilohertz. Let's check it out. First up, a quick look at the form factor reveals a very smart looking box, similar in concept to some of the recent slick looking desktop interfaces we've seen lately. The main chassis is all metal, very small and quite portable. The Track 16 can be powered from your computer if you're using the FireWire connection, but if you're using the USB 2.0 connection, you'll have to hook up the included breakout cable and power supply. Note that this is a FireWire 400 speed bus, even though it uses a FireWire 800 connection. The single incremental knob can control multiple inputs, outputs, and DSP mix levels by touching one of the corresponding buttons below. So for example, if you want to adjust the input trim on guitar input one, hit that button and now the knob is changing that level. Want to use the knob to adjust the headphone volume? Press the button labeled phones. It's pretty simple. The knob indents for some additional functions depending on what it's controlling. So for example, if I have the input on mic one selected, pressing the knob briefly engages the 20 dB pad, but if I hold it down, it engages the 48 volts phantom power for powering microphones on that input. On the output side, pressing the knob acts as a mute switch for the selected output. It's very nice. I really like the seven increment LED meters on the Track 16 a lot as well. The eight meters do double duty, so if the meter button isn't lit up, they're displaying the top row written in white. Hit the meter button and it lights up, and now the meters are displaying the lower row written in blue. Except for the main out meters, which smartly never change. One neat trick with the Track 16 is that you can change the color scheme to suit your taste or lighting conditions. And a second neat trick is the ability to lock out the buttons and knob to prevent accidental level changes. Now I've said that the Track 16 gives you 16 inputs and 14 outputs, and some of those are analog and some of them are digital. Input wise, there's a Hi-Z guitar input right on the front, right beside the mini stereo line in, and quarter inch and eighth inch headphone jacks. Both headphones get the same feed, they're not independent. On the back are the FireWire and USB connections and our digital inputs and outputs. We can configure those for ADAT or TOSLINK depending on your needs. ADAT will give you eight channels of audio on both the ins and outs unless you're at 88.2 or 96 kilohertz and then both get cut to four audio channels. TOSLINK gives you two channels of audio on both the inputs and outputs. Note that 96 kilohertz is the maximum sampling rate for the digital inputs and outputs but the analog inputs can operate at up to 192 kilohertz. Also back here we have our connection for the breakout cable. The solidly built cable offers two XLR mic inputs, a second Hi-Z guitar input, and two balanced line inputs. For outputs, there are balanced quarter inch outputs for the main left and right channels, and two additional line outs for a second pair of monitors or to route signal to a headphone amp or outboard device. Also in the breakout are the MIDI in and out ports and the connection for the included power supply which you'll need if you're using the Track 16 in USB mode. The labels for the cables are etched directly onto the connectors so they won't be coming off, but they are a little difficult to read in low light situations. For those of you less than thrilled with the breakout cable concept, Motu tells us they're coming out with a breakout box for the Track 16 
in the not too distant future. So between the digital and analog inputs, you can record up to 16 different inputs at once to your computer. For simpler recording sessions, if your computer has enough RAM and you don't have too many tracks and plugins going, you can monitor through your DAW. This allows you to instantiate plugins on the track and hear the effects without committing to them. As an example, we have the Track 16 plugged into the Firewire port on our MacBook Pro running digital performer, Motu's DAW. Our track count is minimal, so to reduce the latency in our monitors, we can set the buffer size as low as 64 samples without incurring errors. Our guest guitarist, Mr. Mike Callahan, is going to give you an idea of how much fun you can have by playing his electric guitar through a couple of DP's preset effect configurations. Now once you get into sessions with a lot of tracks and plugins happening at once, you won't be able to set the buffer rate this low without incurring dropouts and glitches in the audio. And when you monitor through your DAW at higher buffer rates, you'll hear an audible delay in the monitors which can throw off your timing when you perform. This brings us to a major component of the Track 16, QMix Effects. The included software, which offers latency-free effects and allows you to create custom latency-free monitor mixes by using the DSP processor built into the interface. QMix FX provides you with eight stereo buses to work with, one for each pair of outputs, and for the mix return, which allows you to loop the output of the Track 16 back to your computer. So if you want to create custom monitor mixes, you can do that, although frankly it's a little more complicated than it should be, because while all the inputs have their own virtual faders in the mix page, there's no dedicated virtual fader for the output of your DAW in QMix FX for the Track 16. For different DAW level adjustments in different monitor mixes for your performers, you'll have to make the level changes in the DAW. So in performer, for example, you can route the individual tracks to a pair of buses and then set up as many aux channels as you need, all looking at the same bus inputs but then routed to different outputs. So for example, I can route this drum loop to output to bus 1 and 2. Then I can create a couple of new stereo aux tracks. Both are looking at bus 1 and 2 for inputs, but the output of aux 1 is routed to phones 1 and 2, while the output of aux 2 is routed to the main outs 1 and 2. So now, if I need to adjust the levels of the DAW in the phones, I do that with the aux 1 fader, and if I want to adjust it in the main monitors, I can do that with the aux 2 fader. QMix FX has a lot of additional features, including EQ, dynamics, and reverb effects, all of which are pretty impressive for a DSP mixer. The EQs consist of high and low pass filters and five bands of center frequency adjustable filters. Motu calls them vintage EQs since they're modeled after a classic British recording console, and you can choose between four different types of filters depending on the Q curve you're looking for, and they sound quite musical. For dynamics, in addition to the standard compressor, the Track 16 also has a leveler modeled after the very popular Teletronics LA-2A that recreates that unit's highly sought after automatic gain control characteristics. If you enable the EQs and compressors on the channels in the input tab, they will be recorded to your DAW. It's very convenient to have those options when tracking, but if you don't want to print the effects and only want to hear it in the monitors, you'll engage them on the output side instead. You can also compress the entire mix with QMix effects and loop it back to your DAW using the return bus, and that's pretty handy. The reverb is also quite good. Five different rooms to choose from here and adjustable reverb times for up to a full minute of decay. Most of the time, you'll probably only use the reverb to sweeten the monitor mix, but it does show up as its own input on the DAW, so if you want to print the reverb to its own stereo track, it's super easy to do. 
Qmix FX also offers some useful and very cool looking audio analysis tools, including FFT analysis, an oscilloscope, an XY plot, phase analysis, and even a tuner. Finally, in addition, the Track 16 includes Motu's AudioDesk DAW software. So hopefully that gives you an overview of some of the features on the Track 16 audio interface from Motu. With 16 inputs and 14 outputs, MIDI ports, high quality DSP effects, and LED metering, the Track 16 brings a lot of features to the desktop party at a very good price. I'm Rob from B&H, and thanks for watching. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.